Good evening, hope you're all well. Uh, just painted the hind, but uh, the 20 minute video, which you'll either find as boring as hell, or you might be a little bit interested on what I'm doing and what paints I'm using, etc. etc. So, uh, I will pop a couple of pictures up as well, just so that you can see the color scheme that I've gone for now. Uh, lovely aircraft, lovely, lovely kit. Uh, this trumpeter, uh, one in 35 mil MI 24V Hind E helicopter. Uh, I'm to drop it across it in my stash uh, from my good friend Dave Housecroft, and still sort of didn't know what to do with the color scheme. And you can see there that uh, I've just started to put an overcoat on, so black based it. As usual, MRP uh, Black Primer. Uh, and the MRP number for that is MRP L for Lima, P for Papa, B for Bravo. And it's a fine surface black. Okay, so primed it in that. Uh, and then the black basing. So that's where you've primed it in black and then gone over the individual colours. Uh, putting sort of like different colours down. <clears throat> Uh, just to highlight it off. Now, when I looked at the picture on this, uh, and I'm just going to reach uh, a grey bird uh, with a black sort of like tiger stripe going away from the cockpit towards the back end. Uh, but on the instruction sheet, uh, the colours seemed to be a little... A little more sort of heading towards the blue side, if you will. So, out with the MRPs, my paint of choice. Now, you can see I'm not spraying in a photo booth there because, obviously, uh, well, I don't need one. I, I'm spraying in my garage. Uh, and there's only me really comes in. Okay. So, what I'm doing, uh, I'm, I've, I've made a mix-up, basically, which is uh, an MRP365, which is a ocean grey. And then just to lighten that off a little bit, if I can find it up here, uh, I've put a little bit of aircraft grey into that as well, MRP374, to really lighten that ocean grey up. Now, obviously, the reason that I've had to do that is because I haven't got... Uh, a grey that's sort of like intermediate i've, I've either got really light grey or really dark grey into your dark into your medium sea greys and your dark sea greys extra dark sea i've got those so I'm sort of like you know, you know i'm thinking i need i need to could have done with a lighter grey somewhere in the middle uh, so that ocean grey with a little bit of light aircraft grey in it when i say a little bit i mean 50 percent uh, into the bottle, mix it up, shake it about, uh, and off you go. Uh, and and give it a light grey. Now, my technique is all about distancing. Uh, and you can see there that I've still got individual panel lines that are still showing through. And that's that's the whole purpose of the uh, of the video, really. Then we go with a little bit of MRP. I think I'm going to offer it up. Yeah, it's a hind mix. Okay, so that's the ocean grey uh, and the light, the light, light aircraft grey. Uh, I'm not pipetting. Uh, I've got some fantastic cleaner now. For for my MRP cleaning of my airbrush, I use AK Extreme Thinner and Cleaner, uh, and your product number on that is AK four seven zero. And if you can drop on that, absolutely fantastic. At cleaning this MRP lacquer paint out of your airbrush. Superb. So, as I said, it's all about the distancing, uh, and I'm a good sort of three inch away. Uh, I want to make sure that these numbers are accurate because I don't want to say I'm an inch or two, you know, and you get people watching your videos and you say, oh, I'll have a bash at this, and I'm an inch or two. How come I'm splatting? How come I'm spidering? How come I'm not getting the same effect? You can see I'm, I'm definitely a good sort of three inch away there at least. Now, my pressure on my compressor for this particular spray, uh, I'm at seven PSI. 
uh, and I have actually got, if, if you look at the back of me uh, airbrush there, uh, my old fancy schmancy Harder and Steenbeck airbrush, uh, I have got that pulled out, okay, so I can go all the way back. However, my finger control uh, with the airbrush is great, uh, and I know exactly how far to pull back in relation to distancing with that airbrush. Uh, it was funny because we had a 24-hour build down at club the other day and I took my harder down and Mark uh, used it to put the black basing on the 219 that we are <laughs> jointly building. I've, I've just uh, sniggered at that because Mark did the majority of the build. Uh, and while Mark were using my airbrush, he said, oh, it feels weird, this, it feels alien. You know, you sort of like kind of get used to your own. And I suppose I'd never really thought about it until precisely that moment that I guess it's like driving the car, isn't it? When you kind of borrow your car, mate. Yeah, of course you can. And you get in it and, you, and, and the car's a car. You know, it drives the same, but it still takes 10, 10, 15 minutes to get used to where's the bike point on the clutch and, you know, all, all that sort of thing. Uh, and Mark said it was exactly the same with airbrush, with my airbrush. He said, using your airbrush, Mark, it feels quite alien. But still did a super, super proud job. So what I'm trying to do is what we all do. Uh, I've black based it, as I've said, uh, and now I'm going back over the individual panels, just putting that light grey down. Now, my finger, uh, I'm not sort of like letting go of the trigger there because... I know my own stop and start technique uh, is good enough that I don't have to do that. Now, I, I do do it from time to time, sometimes uh, keep an eye on my finger uh, and it will start to come on and off the more paint goes down. The best thing about this paint is it is literally like coloured water and for those people that have used MRP, uh, in the past or are using it now as their favoured cho choice of paint uh, I'm sure that you're nodding your head in agreement it is literally like coloured water and it stinks a bit uh, hence you know I, I can do it in my garage all day long but after a while uh, I still do go and open the door okay <coughs> so I've done the wings uh, I did those first because actually I wanted to trial something with uh, the camo pattern uh, by using Humbrol Mascol instead of purchasing the 35 quid mask set uh, that I would have needed to mask this bird off. Well, it's about confidence, I suppose, and feeling, I don't want to sound like a wazzik, but feeling at one with your airbrush and knowing your own airbrush skill, I know that I can, I've got one, literally the steadiest hands in the business. I've been talking to Lid tonight, uh, and with the 0.15 needle in this harder, uh, and my deft of hand, I'm not trying to brag or anything, I'm literally just so steady, it's like I've got angel's fingers. I can paint one in 48 seat belts with my harder airbrush, uh, such such is its precision uh, and the control that I have with my finger. Okay, and that's not bragging. Uh, it's just how, how it is. It's just how it is. Okay, some people are good at racing cars. Some people are good at fishing. Some people are good at whatever. I'm good with airbrushes. That's what I do. So still putting a very light coat of this hind mix, the ocean grey and the light aircraft grey down, uh, just to give it uh, a tone of paint over the uh, sort of pre-painting that I've done, the pre-shading. And you can see, you know, with me, with me, I've got like quite a quite a wisp of a hand. Uh, and my distancing now has become even more exaggerated. Now I'm at sort of five, six inch. Nice on and off with trigger uh, and just feathering it in. Now, again, you might watch this video and think, yeah, that's what I do. Or you might be one of those painters that put super concentrated colour down. 
uh, to get a proper depth of colour. And uh, again, as the more that I airbrush, the more that I airbrush with MRP paint and I get to know this paint's properties, the more I literally fall in love with it because with a flick of the wrist and, and the deft hand, it's such such a micron thin colour that you can uh, replicate and leave all that pre-shading work that you've done underneath uh, and, it, and it shows through significantly enough that it isn't in your face but it's done the job and you can see so I'm whipping it over now showing you the undone side and the done side I had to lower it down a little bit more, didn't I? didn't know where my camera was pointing. I do, I do apologise. Uh, but there, uh, that's just with the hind mix, that ocean grey and light aircraft grey. One side is not done. Lower it down a little bit, Mark. Uh, and the other side there is done. Okay. So what I've done there, obviously, is I have toned down the harshness of the pre-shading. Okay, uh, and a little bit more paint going in. And you can see the wings just down there at the five o'clock position on your screen. Uh, and those are uh, already, they've been mask all, had some mask all applied and, uh, and the darker blue, the darker blue applied. Okay, now the darker blue that I've got for this is MRP380 which is an RAF blue-grey. And the reason that I went for that again is because when I looked at the instructions for the paint guide, you'll see that it does look like quite a nice sort of, how can I explain, a nice deep blue, okay? And that's exactly what I wanted this bird to be. But uh, now going over the other side then, and you can see again the distance on the airbrush technique it's a good three or four inch, uh, and uh, I'm keeping that trigger on. Uh, I'm not spraying a car, so I'm not giving it the sort of like big, long licks. Uh, I do break off every now and again uh, and put some uh, put some concentrated colour down. Okay, just in there, and again because it's a 0 0.15 needle. Even at a distance of three inch, it literally sprays like a as, as thin as a piece of wire. Uh, the cone on it is is very very small. Okay, <coughs> uh, I used to use a point two needle for all my work, uh, which was sufficient. Uh, through my bark sharp airbrush, the one that I cut my teeth on, and <coughs> excuse me, and I still do use that airbrush now, but when I want absolute precision, uh, I, I turn to the harder. Okay. Not being snobby. Uh, I'm 52 now and a couple of years since uh, Arla says to me, you know, you're coming up to 50, big lad. What do you want? Shall I book as a spa break? Uh, and then straight away, me being proper true Yorkshire, oh, spa break, how much money have we got? Uh, and she's, oh, you know, a couple of hundred, 250, 300 quid. Uh, thank the Christ for COVID. Uh, and I mean that obviously in a joking way because I know what it did to people. Uh, however, it did say that I could not go to no spa break. Uh, but uh, certainly don't want to see my lily white ass jumping in and out of a paddling pool. Uh, but the £250 went to very good use. Uh, and it's in my hand right there. Okay. Would I recommend it? Most definitely. Okay, if you want precision work then a 0 0.15 needle is the way to go. Okay. So still on there uh, and, and putting that grey down now. The grey is a little bit too grey, and I know that sounds really stupid, but again, looking at the paint guide, it is grey, but it's more blue-grey, uh, which is why I went for the RAF blue-grey uh, that's going to be the top colour for the Tiger Stripe. And during this paint process, again, I am painting individual panels uh, just to sort of like tone it down a little bit. Uh, there we go, a little bit more in Mark. 
And I think at this point, because I did take my eye off the ball, I think I've actually switched out now to, and you've noticed I haven't cleaned the colour cup, okay? I have actually switched to an MRP295, which is a navy blue. Now, I suppose in some respects, uh, on my audience, I'm going to get people that are absolutely freaking out because I've just said I didn't clean colour cup out. Well, it's it's all about, for me, painting aircraft especially, which is what I love to paint, it's all about the blend and the feathering. When I put a, a slightly different colour into the colour cup, uh, it doesn't change, because it mixes up in that front chamber, it doesn't change from in-your-face grey to in-your-face blue in, you know, one minute, oh, it's grey. Oh, no, Jesus Christ, it's blue. It doesn't work like that. Uh, you certainly get a very nice blended mix of the two paints uh, finally coming together. And then, obviously, on a sliding scale, the grey will lessen uh, and the blue will take over as the primary colour. However, distancing, nice little low pressure on that airbrush uh, and keeping it away from subjects. Don't want to get in too close. And what you'll find is it blends in absolutely gorgeously. Okay, now that's the same for, for, for when you're painting Spitfires and Tornadoes and Phantoms and anything. Once you've started to get that main colour down, if you just add a drop of white or, or even just a slightly lighter colour than your actual main colour, uh, then you can feather it in. And look how tight I am uh, pouring that back in. I'm back on the hind mix there. And, on, and now, look, you see, you can see. And what's rule one? Didn't do it. And just a little bit of blowback just to mix that through. Okay, uh, and, and again, that reduces the starkness. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing that you might have noticed is I'm painting this helicopter uh, and literally after 30 seconds, I'm picking it up. And again, I'm going to have some people that are looking at this video going, what the fucking hell is he doing? Again, properties of MRP, paint it on get it down at the right pressure at the right distance and it is literally dry on touch okay uh, obviously i've used this paint many many times would i do that with vallejo paint definitely not would i even risk it with tamiya paint most certainly not mrp paint it's like i say it's literally dry when it's hitting the surface now not to the point that it's atomizing at the needle tip and it's causing you tiny little splatters. Again, it's all about practicing. And if you can get that pressure absolutely cock on with your distancing and MRP is pre-thinned, you don't need to thin it. It's thin enough. It is literally colored water. Uh, then once you've got all those three components married up, in such a harmonious way and again if you use it nod your head leave me a comment and tell me what experiences that you've had with this paint uh, then you will find it's honestly it's like a dream and back to distance in there and i'm looking and i'm trying to catch it in certain lights and i'm looking to see if i've got the correct shades on either side and again, can you see that? It's literally just a just a very quick, bush, 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 dead, dead simple. Okay. No concentrated colour at this stage at all. Literally blending and feathering in. And that's the beauty of the paint. So a little darkness, just putting a little bit of darkness in. Okay. What I'm actually trying to do there is I'm trying to... Can you see the wings, look, that are still down at the bottom? Uh, and what I want to do is, in my mind's eye, I want to get the same light colour that's on the wings onto the actual main frame body of the aircraft. Uh, and still breaking absolute golden rule number one of lid on. Must have heard myself. Thank you very much, Marky Mark. So... Uh, 
total number of paints used for this particular colour so far one two three four five six we've got a pru blue which is world war ii ref mrp 120 we've got an intermediate blue mrp 295 the hind mix which is ocean gray 365 mixed with a bit of 374 ref blue gray mrp 380 and navy blue which is mrp 295 Back to the subject, you can see I've just popped those wings on there on a bit of a dry fit, uh, and I am basically looking to see if I've replicated the colour on the bird the same that I've got on the wings, and it has taken me all six colours uh, to get that matched right. Okay. But, happy with that. Thanks for watching. Any questions, pop them in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.